Karen forces me to give my iPad to her son because my art is inappropriate. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. I don't know if this belongs here, but I'm fuming and I just want to tell my story. First, let me give some basic context to things. I'm a female and I just turned 18 and I'm new to Reddit. I live with my adoptive parents and they are the sweetest people you'll ever know. For my birthday, my granddad got me an iPad, an Apple pen, and a drawing app I'd been asking for. I love doing digital art and was definitely ecstatic when I got it. My mom was so excited for me and took me shopping to get a case and stick to decorate it with. The friend in question, I'll just call A, is the nicest person I've ever met. She's my closest friend and I don't blame her for what happened. I'd gladly take a bullet for her any day. A is also 18. The person who I can't despise is her witch of a mother. I'll call her Karen because why not? Karen is 38. The son she wanted me to give my iPad to, I'll just call B. B is 10 years old. Karen is a single mom and has made it the base of her personality. She runs a failing mommy blog and used to post parenting videos. Oddly, she believes in vaccination and doesn't think the earth is flat. She's still a very spiritual person and believes heavily in karma and creativity. She homeschools B and doesn't teach him how to read or write, just teaches him about karma and things of that nature. With that random word vomit out of the way, let's get to the story. Yesterday, Karen came over to drop off A so we could hang out and have a girl's day. My mom invited Karen in for coffee and let B have control of the TV remote. I immediately showed a my tablet and we both started acting like idiots and talking about color palettes. B didn't seem to care, but I caught Karen looking at us weirdly from the kitchen. I ignored it because I figured she was just watching B. A few hours went past and it started to rain. It wasn't just a drizzle, it was a downpour and there would be no way Karen could drive home safe. Mom told Karen that she and B could stay in the guest bedroom and A and I can sleep in my dad's game room. It has a pull out couch facing the TV, so we're fine. B wants that he wanted to see the game room, but my dad has a rule that no one under 16 is allowed in, as he has some scary games and concept art littered around. Karen protested lightly, but my mom shut her down and she dropped it. B had a full meltdown, so me and A went to draw in the crafting room, or basement. I decided to show A some of my more scary drawings and pulled up a picture of a werewolf I had drawn. It wasn't gory or bloody, but it was scary, and I didn't want to have it pulled up in case my mom saw. A and I love scary things, so we decided to make a piece together. We put on a five minute timer and each took turns drawing. When we were done, we had drawn a vampire biting into a girl's neck. We made it a bit scary and drew the vampire clawing at her arm. We printed the picture and hung it up so we could decide a color palette, but in the middle of selecting paints, we heard the door open. We had locked it, but it was one of those crappy hook locks, so all it took was a few shakes. B came down the stairs, and at first he didn't notice the printed paper. A told him to leave, but he ignored her and went to try and grab my mother's colored pencils. We stopped him, and while we were dragging him towards the stairs, he saw the picture hanging on the chalkboard. I didn't know something so small could make a sound so loud. He screamed his lungs out and bit A's hand so she would let him go. He bolted up the stairs and I took A to the sink to wash her hand. We had a sink installed so we could wash paintbrushes. Within seconds, Karen was down the stairs and I heard my mom trying to calm down B upstairs. The following is the conversation. I'm going to leave out the swear words so I don't get in trouble. So if there's any weird baby talk, just know the conversation wasn't as nice as I made it out to be. Karen, what the heck did you do to my son? A, we didn't do anything. Me, he came down here so we tried to make him go upstairs and he flipping bit A's hand. Karen, no, what did you show him? At this point, we didn't even know that B had seen the drawing. Me, what? We didn't show him anything. He just came down here and started screaming when we moved him. Karen, don't you flipping lie to me, you little ducker. He told me he saw you drawing a murder. A figured out what she meant before I did. I know, I'm stupid. A, you mean the collab? It's not a murder, it's a vampire. I looked over at the corkboard finally catching on and Karen ran over when she saw me looking. 
She ripped the paper off the tax we had used to put it up and gave this really dramatic gasp. She put a hand over her mouth and her eyes got wide. She looked ridiculous. Karen, does your mother know what kind of filth you've been drawing? I was dumbfounded, so I just answered honestly. Me. Uh, yeah? Karen looked even more offended and noticed my iPad on the table. Karen, if you're going to be drawing such inappropriate filth, you don't deserve this. This maniac picked up my tablet and was about to walk up the stairs. I snatched it away and rushed to stuff it in my pencil bag. Karen tried to grab the bag, but I pushed myself into a corner. I clutched the bag super hard and started to scream for my mom. Mom, what's wrong? You don't need to scream. She saw Karen trying to grab me and ripped her away from me. I just want to say my mom is a big lady. She towers over my dad, who's 5'10", and she's not dainty either. Karen immediately went on a tirade about how I was corrupting her son and forcing him to look at disgusting garbage. She shoved the art into my mom's face, and she just kind of raised her eyebrows at Karen. My mom then turned to look at A. Mom, A, did she make your brother look at this? A, no, it was just hanging up and he saw it. We had the door locked, but I guess he got in. Me. He bit A on the hand, too. A showed her the bite, and she sent A upstairs to get a band-aid from the hall closet. My mom told Karen that she didn't appreciate her behavior and asked her to take B and leave. Karen looked peeved, and I swear her face went beet red. Karen. Are you flipping kidding me? She traumatized my baby! Mom. Your son is fine. He just wasn't supposed to be down here anyway. The door was locked, and he must have forced it open. It was an honest mistake, and I would like you and B to please leave. Karen, if you're going to be that way, witch, at least give my son the tablet. He's going to need therapy and the tablet will help him express himself. My mom rolled her eyes. Mom, fine. She walked over and grabbed a pad of paper and handed it to Karen. Karen looked confused. Then she got angry and slammed the paper onto the ground. Karen, no, you dumb witch. I want the one in her purse. My son needs it more than she ever will. If she's going to be drawing that cursed garbage, then she doesn't deserve it. My mom asked what tablet I had and I told her that Karen wanted my iPad. She looked surprised for a second but just turned to Karen and told her to leave again. Karen was fussing and screaming saying things about how I was disgusting and that my art was inappropriate but my mom threatened to call the police and she just stomped up the stairs. A said she was going to stay and Karen dragged B to the car. My mom sat us down and we went over the events. We all eventually ended up laughing and and my mom put some antibiotic ointment on A's bite just to make sure it was clean. A is still here and my mom says she can stay in the guest room for as long as she wants. Before anyone asks, my dad is on a business trip and won't be back until Friday. My mom is going to call him tomorrow and tell him what happened just in case Karen tries anything. What a jerk though, right? Oh, that's the worst when your best friend's mom is a Karen. I feel so bad for the daughter. I think even the son was just a little confused and scared and kind of caught up in all this. It's not like he ever even showed any interest in wanting the iPad. It seems like Karen saw something nice and shiny and just decided that her kids deserved it more. I am glad the daughter's able to see through her mother's actions and the friendship isn't hurt as a result of this incident. They seem like they're really good friends and I would hate to see See something happen to that because of something stupid like this. Hopefully Karen has time to calm down and maybe from now on she doesn't come in the house when she's dropping off your friend. My grandma maliciously complied with her husband's request for over 50 years, much to his displeasure. So this is my grandmother's story. My family has been telling the tale for decades. Grandpa himself told it to his daughter's fiance as a lesson in not underestimating his new bride. Grandma told it slightly differently to my mom when she and my father were engaged. This is somewhere between the two versions. It's a lesson in be careful what you wish for as you just might get it. Personally, I've always thought thought that it was hilarious. My grandparents were very old school. Grandpa got a job working for John Deere as a teen and worked his way up the ladder to foreman, then manager. Grandma was a typical housewife in the 1950s and was held to typical housewife standards. She was to cook and clean and be prepared to entertain grandpa's business associates at a moment's notice. It was her job to make sure the children were taken care of and never got in her husband's way. She was expected to have dinner on the table at 530 sharp when he got home from 
from work. Her house and herself were to be impeccably kept at all times, etc. They were progressive and well off enough that grandma had her own car. She was expected to use it to run the household errands and take the four kids to appointments and such. It was important that her husband not be bothered with such things. The household and family were her responsibility. He had a job. Well, one day, grandpa arrived home from work. And not only was dinner not on the table, but grandma wasn't even there. The kids, teens at the time, hadn't been fed. Their homework was still on the kitchen table, there were unwashed dishes in the sink, and a dozen other little chores hadn't been done yet. Most importantly, grandpa was inconvenienced. He'd been home just long enough to let his frustration stew into anger when grandma's car pulled into the drive. He began shouting at her before she'd even the chance to set down her purse or take off her jacket. He ranted, about all the things she hadn't done because she was out running around when she should have been home, taking care of the house and making his dinner. He worked very hard all day to provide for his family. Was it too much to ask for a hot dinner when he got home? She had a very good reason for not being home, but he never let her tell it, accepting no excuses. But she was a good wife. So she intended to let him vent for a while, then she would serve him supper and explain what had gone wrong. Then Grandpa screwed up. As sometimes happens when we speak in anger, he began to blame the wrong thing for his irritation. He began to blame the car and her access to it. He said something to the effect of, You don't have any business out driving around anyway. You should be home. I should never have let you start driving in the first place. Women shouldn't drive. You don't want me to drive? Grandma asked calmly, retrieving her keys from her purse. Fine, then I won't drive ever again. And she set those car keys on the counter, put her things away, and served dinner. And bless her heart, Grandma stuck with that declaration no matter how much more difficult it made life. Grandpa had to take afternoons off in the middle of the week when a teacher scheduled a meeting. He didn't get a moment's peace on the weekends between grocery trips and taking the kids to activities or doctor appointments or for haircuts or clothes. He had to drive Grandma to every Saturday salon appointment. Previously, Grandma had taken herself and the kids to church, letting him sleep. Now, he had to wake up early on Sundays to take them all himself. Grandpa was nearly as stubborn as his wife. He held out, expecting her to apologize and ask for her keys back. She never did. Instead, she simply rearranged the household schedule so that he could handle all the driving. Months later, after never getting a single weekend to relax, after having dinner pushed back nearly every day because he had to drive someone someplace, he finally gave in and apologized. He tried to tell her that he was wrong and that she should start driving again. He tried to tell her that he now appreciated all she did to make his life easier. He all but begged her to take those keys. I suspect that Grandma had always disliked driving because she never did take back those keys. Nothing Grandpa said or did could convince her to get back behind the wheel. He'd said she had no business driving a car and she was going to hold him to that declaration, no matter what. For over 50 years, until the day she died, Grandma never drove a car again for any reason. Not after the kids graduated and moved out, not after Grandpa retired, even after Grandpa's death in the 80s, still she refused because, my husband said that women shouldn't drive. Wow, talk about going the distance. She kept her word right till the end. I do gotta say though, this does feel a little petty to let it go on for quite that long. At some point you have to realize the disadvantage you're putting your husband and your children at by just refusing to drive over a petty argument. The husband apologized and did all that stuff in a time where a lot of men probably wouldn't have. I'm not saying his actions are by any means acceptable, but if it came down to your kid needs to go to an appointment or something like that, just drive. It's just not worth it. As they said, let this just be a lesson. Don't take the people closest to you for granted. 99.99% of the time, they're there to help you and are trying to do what they can. If things don't go exactly the way you expect them to, give them the benefit of the doubt. I'm sure they have a perfectly good reason. Just take a second, calm down, and have a conversation.
I had the opportunity to mess up some girl's life, but I said no. Old story, but in 2007, I was involved in a traffic accident on a ramp in Baltimore. Traffic went from the speed limit 55 miles per hour to a dead stop around the curve of the exit in a space of about 500 feet, and it had just started raining. I and my Honda Accord managed to stop literal inches from the person in front of me's bumper. I had enough time to heave half a sigh of relief before I was rear ended ended so hard that the can of tea in my waist level console cup holder wound up splattered all over the windshield. I get out of the car and the person who hit me is literally crying blood. She's driving a Saturn that is at least a decade old and the ancient airbag broke her nose and blacked both of her eyes. She's also crying for real because this is her only transportation. I go, crap, grab an umbrella out of my now weirdly shaped back seat and hold it over her while she sobs, explaining her brakes had been locking up lately and she was literally on her way to the mechanics and tries to text her boyfriend to pick her up. She's crying so hard that she drops her phone twice. And then a cop shows up. Baltimore cops are jerks. So he writes this girl a ticket about failure to control speed to avoid an accident and reckless endangerment, and half a dozen other bullcrap things to where the ticket would literally cost more than a new car, and she can have her license revoked and or jail time. She's hysterical. I talk to her and reassure her it's not her fault, and manage to swap insurance info. Fast forward two months. I had mild whiplash, but I'm healed up and mostly good regarding the accident. Have a new car and everything. I get a notice in the mail that I'm requested to be a witness for this poor girl's trial for her ticket. Don't have to show, but it'd be nice. No way I'm gonna let that cop roast her. I was asked, so I'm taking a day off work to show up. I turn up in court dressed in my civil servant best. Was working for the state government at the time, so however staid you might imagine, multiply it by three. And even toss on some makeup to impress the judge. I wait three hours for her hearing because no way am I gonna accidentally be late. The cop goes first, making up a bunch of bull crap about how recklessly she was driving to have hit me in an accident he was probably 10 miles away from witnessing from his response time. Then the judge calls me and I stand up. Cop looks like this weird combo of surprised Pikachu and peeved. Like he didn't expect me to show. Poor girl was already crying and starts crying more. So I get to the stand, get sworn in, and tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So I see that we were going exactly the speed limit. I know because I checked my speedometer in surprised that there wasn't more traffic. I say that she was following a proper distance behind me because I checked my rear view mirror and she was a ways off. I say that it had just started raining after a dry week, so the road was greasy as heck and I knew that because I'd almost slid into the car in front of me, only saved by my car's ABS. I say that her wheels had locked because I'd heard the screech and seen the skid marks, and that she definitely wasn't at fault because she was on her way to get her car ABS fixed, and I mentioned that the comp didn't show up until 20 minutes later. I know this sounds like an and everyone clapped moment, but the judge did thank me for doing my civic duty and turning up, and I got a quick hug from the poor girl after the judge dismissed her charges. Anyway, Baltimore cops are jerks, and if you can turn up in court to fight a traffic ticket, even someone else's, you should do so. God, I hate hearing about stuff like this. This lady's already having an awful day and here comes this cop just trying to make his quota on writing a nice big ticket. It's disgusting behavior. And while I would like to solely blame the cop in this situation, it goes bigger than that. It comes down to the problem that cops need to make a quota in the first place. They need to interact with a certain amount of crime in order for them to keep their jobs. In some cases, this means exaggerating or even completely falsifying records. Unfortunately, this girl here happened to be the recipient of it this time. Thankfully, we had another citizen who was willing to stand up and speak the truth about what happened. I really hope there was some kind of repercussions for this police officer. This kind of thing can't be allowed to happen. If our poster hadn't shown up for this woman, she could have had her life ruined with the amount of money she was going to be expected to cough up. I'm glad we have a story with a happy ending. 
Apparently, I was expected to pay for everyone's meal at New Year's Eve dinner, so I just quietly left. I, a 32-year-old female, recently inherited a good amount of money from my mom. I keep the money in a separate account as I still haven't decided what to do with it and I didn't want it to go to waste. I noticed my husband constantly bringing up the inheritance money and making countless suggestions as to how I should spend it. Another thing is that he expects me to pay for nearly everything the past couple of weeks. For New Year's Eve, my husband and I meet up with his family at a restaurant to celebrate. It was going fine until I found out I was expected to pay for everyone at the table. My husband's mom joked about paying for our dinner out of my inheritance pocket, which made me livid, but I showed no reaction. Just silently paid for my own food and drinks, then got up and made my way out of the restaurant. They were shouting after me like a crowd and my husband trying to get me to come back, but I drove home. He got back at 3 a.m. yelling at me, saying I was pathetic to get up and walk out on him and his family after they relied on me to pay for their food and thought I was gracious enough to do it. But they were wrong. He said I humiliated him and his family and that what I did was an attempt to get back at them for not being able to help mom when she was sick. Not true is all I'm going to say. He's mad and is saying I caused a huge rift between his family and me when it wouldn't have hurt me to pay for the celebratory dinner. Am I the jerk? What? No, not at all. What the heck is this? What makes these people think they have any kind of entitlement to your inheritance money? I don't care if it's just dinner. Everyone still pays for their own way in this world. If you offered to pay, that would be one thing. But that's not the case. Apparently, the whole family just showed up expecting that you would cover everything. I really hate hearing about stories like this. It's sad how money has this effect on people and can cause these rifts in family. But our original poster did the right thing here, I think. Hopefully, once everything settles down a little bit, they can get back to normal and maybe enjoy a nice dinner, where everyone pays for themselves. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot, linked in the description as well. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.